All right, for section 10.7, the ratio and the root test. So in this section, we will discuss the last two of the 10 tests that we discuss to determine the convergence or divergence of an infinite series. So uh, let's, let's look at the ratio test first. And well, this is what we do for the ratio test. So we are gonna set a limit of the given ratio, of this ratio that is a sub n plus one over a sub n. And well, in this case, um, if that limit is less than one, well, the series is absolutely convergent. Okay, in this case, this this test is very strong because it's it actually determines absolute convergence as opposed to just convergence. And the second point is, if that limit is greater than one, well, or infinity, then the series is divergent. But otherwise, when the limit it equals is equal to one, the ratio test is inconclusive. Uh, I think our textbooks or other textbooks, instead of calling this L, I think they use the letter uppercase R, I mean lowercase R for, for ratio. So I just wanted to clarify this so when you look at the homework, um, you may see a different letter. All right, so let's do a couple of examples to see this in action. Well, so sigma n equals one to infinity, negative 1 to the n and squared over 3 to the n. So what we're going to do is set up this this ratio test. Okay, so limit a sub n plus 1. Okay, let me make this look like an actual subscript. n approaches infinity and that's the limit of uh, as n approaches infinity of uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1. So what we're going to do is replace everything containing n's with n plus 1, n plus 1 squared over 3 to the n plus 1, the whole thing being divided by a sub n, which is the original expression in the series, negative 1 to the n, n squared over 3 to the n. All right, and yes, I know this setup, it's a little bit big. So on, on previous exercises, I will, I mean, on the, on the following exercises, I will show you what to do to avoid writing all this. Okay, one thing to take into consideration here is the fact that absolute value of ours here will just take care of these alternating factors right here, all right? Because, well, negative 1 to the n plus 1 and negative 1 to the n both take, uh, or, or actually both at, both up output in positives and negatives. So these absolute value bars will take care of them. Okay, so no need to write them anymore. And then in this case, well, I'm going to write this um, limit n approaches infinity of n plus 1 squared over 3 to the n plus 1 times the reciprocal n squared or rather 3 to the n over n squared right so here let's see um, <clears throat> We're gonna get limit. So we need to work actually on simplifying the expression inside of the limit. That is, I'm gonna exp I'm going to expand the binomial right here, n squared plus two n plus one divided by three to the n times three to the first power times three to the n over n squared. All right, and notice here how. Um, the three to the n's cancel, leaving us with limit n approaches infinity of n squared plus two plus two n plus one over three n squared. And while in this case, if we compute this limit, we have polynomial over polynomial, both degrees in the numerator and denominator are the same. So we can just go with the ratio of the leading coefficients, in this case, one third, which is a number less than one. So for this reason, 
series converges by the ratio test. All right. Let's look at letter B. Letter B is sigma n equals 1 to infinity of n factorial you know, over 5 to the n. And by the way, as a side note right here, I would like to comment that this test right here, uh, okay, let me go to the top of the page, to the previous page. Actually, you want to go back to the definition box. This test right here is going to be your best friend for series involving factorials. It's, and it's also uh, an, an alternative to alternating series. That's another alternative as well. All right. <coughs> so let's set this one up. So that's going to be, well, limit a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Absolute value of that n approaches infinity. That is limit n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1 factorial over 5 to the n plus 1 and again instead like I did before instead of dividing by the original expression I'm going to just multiply by the reciprocal of the original 5 to the n over n factorial all right so let's start simplifying now on the denominator of the first fraction right here we can break up this 5 to the n plus 1 as the limit, let me actually do it here. Limit and approaches infinity. So that's uh, 5 to the n times 5 to the first in a very similar way that we did before. The second fraction actually is going to remain the same. Now the issue here is with the factorial. So let's get rid of those factorial symbols. But recall that we need to expand about the largest of the factorials in this case, well, between n plus 1 factorial and n factorial, the largest of them is n plus 1 factorial. That's going to be n plus 1 times n, but because the denominator is an n, plus, n, an n factorial, there's a match in here, and we can cancel, cancel. So, limit n approaches infinity, uh, that's an n plus 1 over 5 to the n. Oh, actually, no, no more 5 to the n. Actually, uh, this is just 5 because also the 5 to the n's cancel as well. And we're left with simply n plus 5. I mean, n plus 1 over 5. And when we compute this limit, it turns out that this limit goes to infinity, which is a limit greater than 1. And for this reason, the series diverges by the ratio test. Alright. Letter C, sigma n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n squared plus 1. All right, so for this exercise, again, all right, let's set up the ratio. So that's uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared plus 1. times the reciprocal of the original series, which is in this case n squared plus 1 over negative 1 to the n. All right. Uh, so on the one hand, first of all, see how these um, alternating factors are going to get canceled because of the absolute value bar. So just cross them like that, just cancel them like that. Uh, but in this case, we will be left with the following. So. In the numerator, we will be left with limit, well, number one, first of all, limit n approaches infinity of n squared plus 1 
over okay let's square this binomial that will be n squared plus 2n plus 2 plus 1 and this will be limit n approaches infinity of n squared plus 1 over n squared plus 2n plus 3 and in this case if we compute this limit notice how we have polynomial over polynomial leading coefficients are 1 and 1 and we can go with the ratio of them because the degrees of both numerator and denominator are the same so in this case the limit is 1 and in accordance with the ratio test test inconclusive so in this case we would have to use a different test well notice we have a negative 1 to the end so it seems like it's going to be a good candidate for the alternating series test and just just uh i mean just very quick uh well it's one over big number yes it's going to it's going to it's going to meet it's going to satisfy the two conditions and then when we test for absolute convergence take the absolute value of the series it's going to be a, a series like this one n equals zero to infinity over uh, one over n squared plus one and this one looks like sigma equals sigma n equals zero to infinity one over n squared so we can compare with one over n squared which is a convergent p series and you can use limit comparison test direct comparison test to show that the series will actually converge absolutely however that's using the alternating series test <laughs> well <clears throat> sorry about that all right so for letter d sigma n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n 2 4 2 times 4 times 6 dot 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 to n 2 5 8 dot 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 3 n plus 1 all right so you may run into series that have this look you know like uh, it looks like a factorial but it's not a factorial because the factorial it's actually the product of all the no of all the integers below n including n like through fact like 5 factorial you know is 5 times 4 times 2 times 1 oh forgot the 3 come on uh oh, 4 3 2 1 all right so it's all the numbers below however we see these increasing numbers but these increasing numbers follow the pattern like 2 4 6 2 n you know these are the even numbers 2 5 8 the next would be 11 maybe 14 17 etc so wait hmm. so in this case well how do we set up a limit for this one well so number one uh, limit and approaches infinity absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n and the setup for this one is going to be a little bit big so i'm gonna i'm gonna follow the next line uh, so that's going to be limit and approaches infinity of uh, absolute value of negative 1 to the n plus 1. And so I'm going to put it in here instead. So 2 times 4 times 6 dot dot dot. Well, you would think of just going with the, you know, with the n plus 1. However, I'm going to leave a space in here. You will see why. So this is going to be a 2 times n plus 1. The whole thing over 2 times 5 times 8 dot dot dot. And I'm going to leave a space in here. And I'm going to do 3 times n plus 1 minus 1. This will be times the reciprocal of the original series, you know. So that's going to be 2 5 8 dot 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 3n minus 1 2 no, no 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 this is 2 4 6 dot 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 2n all right now the reason for this is because so when i simplify this um this 2n plus 1, which will actually become 
2n plus 2, and this one will become 3n plus 3 minus 1, this will become 3n plus 2, all right? However, if I wanted, if I wanted to, to divide out factors here, I wouldn't be able to, fact, to divide out the 3n minus 1 or the 2n right here. So for this reason, I'm leaving some space in between the last to write the second to the last. In this case, the second to the last would be 2n and 3n minus 1. All right? So, well, now that we have all this, well... So this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to cancel. We will cancel this. Okay, let me use the yes. We use yeah, would cancel here. So I would be able to cancel 2, 4, 6, 2, N with 2, 4, 6, 2, N. And then 2, 5, 8, 3, N. 2, 5, 8, 3, N minus 1 rather. Not just 3, N. And also, oh, one thing I forgot over here is to write down the, the alternating factor which actually, of course, you know, those get cancelled, right? But it's important to write them anyway. And well, once we simplify this madness, all we're going to be left with is... limit absolute value of 2n plus 2 over 3n plus 2. And the limit in this case, well, polynomial over polynomial, both degrees are the same. We can go with the ratio of the leading coefficients, which is two-thirds, which happens to be less than one. And this means that the series converges by the ratio test. All right. So yeah, so this is it about this is it about this uh, the um, the ratio test, and in the next video we will talk about the root test.